Hello YouTube, as you know some months ago I actually got myself a nice new HP laptop. I really really love the experience of working with this laptop, except I had that one little quirk. And that is the Beats audio driver, which actually somehow interfered with my audio editing. So in this episode, I'm actually going to show you how I removed it, so if you actually encounter the same problem, you can follow the method shared with you in this guide. It is the 5th of November 2012, a Monday. You are watching 0612 TV. This is 0612 TV. Welcome aboard. So today, I'm going to show you how you can actually disable the Beats audio driver on your HP notebook if you actually have the need to do so. Now just to go a little bit in depth as to why I had to do that, mainly because there was this stereo widening effect that I couldn't switch off. Basically the checkbox which said something like enable effects didn't actually disable it when I unchecked it. And there were a number of other settings that didn't really help. And apart from that, there seemed to be some kind of bass boost which despite the fact that you know I disabled all the EQs, it still kind of kicked in. So I wasn't too happy when it comes to editing uh, my actual audio recordings because I needed to hear exactly what my mic had picked up. If on playback, the audio is actually affected by the driver, I cannot accurately edit my audio. So I hope this shows you that I'm not actually nitpicking, I really had the need to get rid of that driver. So without further ado, here's how you can do that. As with all tutorials like this, please do this at your own risk. So let's begin. First, hit start and type in device manager, hit enter. Then hop over to this segment called sound, video and game controllers. You should be able to see an item in there labeled IDT high definition audio codec. This is basically the driver that drives your audio system. Double click on that line and go to the driver tab. Look for the update driver button and click on it. Now click browse my computer for driver software. After that, click on let me pick from a list of device drivers on my computer. You might have to wait a few moments until the list comes up. All you have to do now is to select the high definition audio device. Click next and you should get a warning. Now make sure you read and understand that warning. Like I said before, I cannot be held responsible if you, I don't know, fry your laptop or turn your cat into a dog or whatever. Point is, you do need to understand what you're doing. And if you're okay with the risk, click yes. Now that is basically it. You might have to wait a while for your computer to actually, you know, unload the Beats driver and load in the default Windows high definition audio driver. But once it's all done, you should actually be able to check that this change has indeed taken place. Head over to your system tray and right click the volume icon. Then click the playback devices option. Now if the item you see there is actually labeled speakers, high definition audio device, then that's it, you have actually done the job. Now remember that I only did this because I had a huge practical need to do so. If you actually look underneath your laptop, you should be able to see some extra speakers, a uh, bass subwoofer, and none of these will actually work when you use this driver. Also of course, none of the equalization options or any other effects that are presented to you in the Beats audio control panel will actually have any effect on the audio because of course you have now bypassed that driver. Now if you want to undo this change, it's not that hard. The steps are pretty much the same. You open device manager and now you look for the high definition audio device. Double click on it, go to driver and you should see that the roll back button has actually been activated. As its name implies, rolling back will sort of undo any driver changes you've made. So this will automatically reload the correct beats driver. In any case, rollback should replace the IDT drivers. If it doesn't, you might have to manually search for the correct IDT driver. So yeah, I hope I've been a help. I know most of you probably don't need this, but to the couple of you who actually edit audio like I do, chances are you probably want to take a look at this. So that's all there is for today's episode. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite and subscription you give me. But until next time, you are watching 0612 TV.